Hello. I won't talk. I will just switch to the scene. <laughs> All right. So we were to the last part of this video series and this is the part on the juicy conclusions so it will be a synthesis a summary of what we have covered in this series of videos on the Queen de Chimstellis. so juicy conclusions from the juicy knowledge snippets found in the Queen de Chim part one now the first one is the um, this, this is standard advice from Pseudo Hermes, but it's worth repeating. Know your craft to know when, astrological timing, and how to make petitions and talismans, what the what to ask for, and to whom, meaning to which hierarchy. Verify the results, upgrade your craft, reiterate. This comes straight up from the last video that we made when we Oh no, sorry, this comes from the first, um, the first videos um, that we made um, when, we, uh, when Hermes was talking about um, how to, to uh, basically saying blessed be he that um, knows how to, to ask, what to ask, in which moment to ask. Um, like at the start of the text and this is controversial um, not no not really controversial but um, let's say you have some talismans talismans if well made of course should have an effect and that effect um, the strongest point of talismans is that they work continuously on the background so why should you ask for something when you have the talisman of that particular fixed star in this case? Well, if you want something specific which f happens to fall under the dominion of um, what's, what that star gives you, then um, you could petition that star through the talisman. In a way, some say that um, when you make a talisman, you freeze that moment into the talisman. So, in a way, um, you are imprinting the celestial influences by just by virtue of the fact that you're making that talisman and carving those things at that moment, just like a bird chart. Um, so, you could ask the entity, the spirit of the talisman. Uh, let's let's say as an example that you made an, a, a talisman of algal you could ask the algal spirit of that talisman to give you something specific associated to algal maybe you just don't want protection you want um, Al algal also gives favor so maybe you want to ask um, let's say something to your boss at work or maybe you have to ask for some government p permission for, I don't know, something that you want to do. Um, then, of course, the talisman is going to give you the favor influence, so to speak, in the background all the time without you needing to ask. But if you want to ask for that specific thing you want to accomplish, then you could do it theoretically through um, the talisman or uh, asking directly Algol, using the talisman as some sort of intermediary of the spirit of the talisman. I don't know, based on your uh, on your paradigm of interpretation of whatever the fuck we're doing as astrological magicians. Um, yeah, so this first point is all about can you do it whenever you want or can you do it in a particular time when it's going to be when it's going to have more probability of success which by the way is the whole premise behind astrological magic of course um, so I guess what Hermes is saying here is that you can ask for something you can do astrological magic but of course if it's reasonable to to say that if it's astrological then um, 
by itself it's going to be done when the astrological conditions are um, the best available and this is what this point is about um, yeah and then verify the results upgrade your art your science your craft as an astrological magician and then reiterate and repeat until you get better and better and better so there's people that say that you can ask whatever you want whenever you want once you made the talisman i have found this to be partially true it's not something related to um you just can't say yes or no it's not a, a a black and white thing of course if you're going to ask and if the talisman was well made you're going to have a rapport with that spirit so the spirit will hear your prayers sometimes even your thoughts <laughs> maybe more on this in future videos um but in the end we're still in the sublunar world so my opinion my personal opinion on this is that yes you can ask whenever you want if you got the talisman even if you didn't have if, if you don't have a talisman but since we are in the sublunar world and this world is managed and ruled by astrological laws by the celestial movements of the stars then whatever you ask is going to manifest according to these laws and this again it's one of the principles behind um astrological magic and the threefold worldview that Agrippa talked about so much at the start of his three books so if you do it during a particularly auspicious astrological moment then it stands to reason that your petition is going to be manifested in a much swifter and efficient way or if you ask whenever i'm not sure but it could also manifest when astrological conditions are the most the most conducive to what you asked let me give you an example because it may maybe it's it's a bit unclear let me make this clearer um let's say you ask Aldebaran for riches and honors. Let's say you, you ask something specific because that's what it does, like passively, um, if you have a talisman. So you want to have $100 and you want people to talk about you um, uh, in a particular social circle uh, that you. Uh, frequent i don't know let's say that the moon is not conjunct aldebaran when you do this you just have the talisman you look at the talisman you just ask aldebaran through the talisman to give you these specific things and indeed it can they can manifest i have had experiences although not so intense um where they manifested even not in specific astrological moments when a petition was asked but sometimes it's more probable that these these requests of yours will manifest when the moon for example will become conjunct aldebaran in the next days or maybe uh when aldebaran will rise the following day um hell why not even you know to complete beginners suggests to make talismans of fixed stars even without the moon conjunct the fixed star just by um doing them when the fixed star is rising so and i don't know about results but if somebody had success with these very very simple elections then it stands to reason that the moon uh, becoming conjunct the fixed star being you know as they say the mediatrix between the celestial world and the 
our elemental material world, then it should speed up the manifestation of that star's thematic um, archetypal themes uh, even more than just this fixed star rising or culminating for that matter. Uh, yeah. So that's the whole thing behind the fir this first um, bullet point, I guess. Maybe if you have a talisman, but you ask when, uh, during uh, an election, uh, then probably you're going to, your, your petition is going to be heard and satisfied much more easily and with much more success. Or maybe you will have the experience of asking and then you will wait and then it will manifest when that fixed star will have more grasp on the physical world than normal which by the way is exactly what we do when we select when we elect a particularly auspicious astrological moment for the making of a talisman meaning when the star is rising in conju is conjunct to the moon um, and that's it and that's it really <laughs> yeah then you gotta look at the lord of the first house uh, the moon mustn't be debilitated, etc, etc. So, let's get to the second point. No mention on the viability of aspects cast by the moon to the fixed stars for talismanic making purposes. Just the conjunction is mentioned. And now compare this with Agrippa. Now, Agrippa, why do I say compare with Agrippa? Because Agrippa also admits in his three books that the sextile or, tr or trine cast by the moon to the fixed star is a viable um, is a viable aspect for the making of a talisman uh, actually don't remember if he says a sextile or trine uh, actually maybe he just says just an aspect but of course I guess that a trine is maybe the best thing and then the sextile of course and then if you want something stronger and you want to play with fate you, you could try also I guess the the square uh, I don't know you could try and see I'm not responsible you do it <laughs> with the, uh, by your own responsibility and also, uh, we are talking about conjunction to the projection of the star to the ecliptic. So we are talking about the zodiacal degree the fixed star is projected to in the ecliptic. Uh, of course, there's people like Michael Ofek, which uh, use parents and, you know, um, co-rising of the stars with the moon and also the the planets of the same nature of the fixed star co-rising and this of course is much more uh, it kind of makes sense I, I am I am experimenting with this with mild success although I still have to experiment more uh, but it makes sense if you actually look be because if you actually look at the sky that's the way the um, the people the ancient people did it just by observing the sky and seeing exactly how um, when the actual star was rising not the actual projection to the ecliptic Unless, of course, you are talking about the medieval. Maybe I'm talking more about the classical approach. Um, the medieval and the Renaissance approach is more with the uh, the projection, the degree projected to the to the ecliptic of the fixed star. Uh, and of course, this creates incredible distortions when the fixed stars have a high declination. Uh, or low declination if they are very much under the ecliptic and the moon is on the ecliptic or very near the ecliptic when the moon is going to be conjunct the um, 
projected degree on the ascendant the star is going to be much 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 lower um, or much much higher if it's higher in declination than the actual horizon so this creates weird situations um, and this also throws the whole astrological structure of astrological magic into disarray because the ancients had success with planets called rising the medievals and the renaissance people had successes with the moon conjunct the projected degree so who the hell is right i don't know experiment and find out join the fray so yeah dots 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 sense of suspension and that's connected the third point is connected to the second because there is no mention of the conjunctions application or separation from the actual um, physical uh, fixed star of course con the moon's conjunction we're talking about the moon's conjunction they just say as we have said uh, as we have seen in the previous videos just operate if the moon were with it meaning when the moon is conjunct with the fixed star uh, or that's that's why i say no mention of the conjunctions application or separation because they say just operate if the moon were with it so what about the moon being near the fixed star and maybe even after the conjunction to the exact degree projected to the uh, to the ecliptic different school of thoughts just experiment see how you um, what results you get and also if you try and take an immundo approach which means in the world which means basically you look at the sky and see what's happening in the sky and by the way you can do you can do this in a much more easy uh, in a much easier way today with astrological software which has a stellarium built in it i use the stellarium of astrovisor which is a nice app for android uh, you can also use uh, skyview stellarium uh, for windows uh, if I recall correctly. Anyway, you can see exactly when the fixed star is rising. You can see if the moon is parallel to the horizon along with the fixed star. And then, of course, you can exit from that and you can take a look at the actual projected election, like the normal, you know, zodiacal wheel election that we are so much used um, to as astrologers. And see, you know, if there is anything bad, like uh, squares by the Moon and the Ascendant with uh, Mars, Saturn, um, the Sun, maybe, also. We will talk about negative aspects to the Sun in the next slide. And yeah, if it's good, you can try and you can make your own um, co-rising uh, fixed star talisman with the Moon, co-rising with the fixed star and or the planet or the planets associated to that fixed star by the way right now in maybe some months um formal hot is co-rising with jupiter M maybe it has recently um but they will co-culminate <laughs> I, I don't even know if that's anyway um Pass me this term, permit me to use this term, co-culminating, culminating together with Jupiter. And of course, the projected degree of Fomalhaut is completely, you know, in another place. Um, yeah, I also wanted to talk about this. There is a difference between um, stars co-rising with the moon and stars culminating with the moon or with whatever planet you want. Uh, there is a reason between 
there is a difference between the rise and the culmination because basically uh, this is complicated we are dealing with uh, Jesus you should look uh, at an animation or maybe at a stellarium you should look at a stellarium and then animate the sky and see how the ecliptic uh, rises and how it, it's inclined so <laughs> Jesus wait a second let me all right so <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this, I'm doing this. anyway um, let's take this is <laughs> Ah, Jesus. This is... This is the horizon. Of where <laughs> when something rises, the planets do... Uh, yeah, this movement, and then they set, and then they go under, right? The Earth. So, when this is... When a planet follows the ecliptic in this horizontal way, then there is no problem. The, pl the planet is on the ecliptic, so um, when it's going to rise here, it's going to be still here. It's going to still follow this, um, this circle, which is the ecliptic, which is moving um, throughout the day. If, however, you're not talking about a planet but you're talking about a fixed star a fixed star is not on the ecliptic and that's where the distortion come in that's where the mind fuck com comes in <laughs> so imagine a circle going here from the ascendant rising culminating and then going down from the descendant here and then it goes under it that's the ecliptic what if a fixed star is not here on the ascendant but it's actually um, it's not on, on, on the ecliptic, but it's actually here, or here. We have like a third dimension. We have the depth, so to speak. It's not really... Well. Anyway, let's say that there is the moon here, and then the star is here. So when the ecliptic is going to rise, the fixed star is going to rotate... Uh, Jesus, this is complicated. But anyway, if they are co-rising together because they are on the same on the same plane on your horizon, when they culminate, they will be a, a little bit um, different in position. The more the fixed star is um, away from the ecliptic, so if they are co-rising here and you see them, you see the moon, for example, and the fixed star co-rising together, when they culminate, the fixed star is going to be it's not going to culminate at the same time as the moon. Uh, this is so... This would be much, much simpler with a, a visualization. Maybe we'll make a video if I figure out how to do it, maybe from my from my cell phone. Um, yeah, back to the... To the slides. So, basically, what I wanted to say is that if you want to experiment, you actually have three options. You can use the standard projection to the ecliptic degree, which is uh, what everybody, uh, what the majority of people does. Or you can try and see um, if you see a good election um, with the star and the moon or the planet co-rising on the horizon, of course. Or if you still can find it, you could try and you could try your luck if you um, uh, if you if you look for a culmination of both the planets and the star, and you should have both the star and the moon exactly on the mer on the meridian, and that is, by the way, as we have seen in these slides in the Quindici Stellis. Uh, Hermes says that a star, the higher it is in the sky, the more potent it is. So that's completely different than the projected degree, as I told you. Because the projected degree distorts the position of the, the star, because it projects perpendicularly the star to the ecliptic. 
However, when the, the projected degree of the star is culminating, the actual star may be in a completely different position. It may actually be in the ninth house of the sky, or maybe in the tenth or the eleventh. Um, and the whole point of the medium celli is that it is the highest point in the sky. So it's a position, it's a symbolical position of domination of the whole sky. And yeah, so you can try and see if you find a good election with a projected degree, that's all right. You can also try to see if you can find the core rising of the star and the moon. Or you can try to see if you can get both the star and the fixed, both the fixed star and the moon, or the planet, um, culminating so exactly al um, alineated to the meridian. And of course, conjunction the conjunctions um, application and separation gets all skewed. Because it, um, in such a, an approach, in these two in mundo approaches, um, you gotta rely more on the visibility of what's going on in the sky rather than the actual degree of the moon and the ac or whatever planet and the actual projected degree of the star on, onto the ecliptic. So, are they viable? Probably. Um, see what you can come up with, experiment, I am experimenting, and they, I don't want to say too much, but they s seem to me to feel different, the talismans made from, you know, co-rising, co-culmination, than the projected degree talismans. Many people are not into fixed stars talismans. Um, they say they are the cutting edge right now, and then in the future probably Deacons will be cutting edge. For now Deacons is pioneer stuff. Uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, it's more like... Yeah, anyway. Whatever. Um, so yeah, that's why I think that Hermes is saying operate if the moon were with it. Because maybe he is referring to the co-rising and co-culmination, maybe. And by the way, the moon transfers light. So if the moon is separating from the projected degree or from the actual place of the star, why shouldn't the moon transfer the light of the star and still give off its archetypal influences on the sublunar world if it's slightly separating from the star? Yeah, but in electional astrology Separating aspects show what is in the past, so if you do it, then you're leaving it into the past, you are making a talisman to get away from that kind of energy, I know. I know. Um, I know. But anyway, it's, it's nice to think about this stuff, and we gotta experiment more. We just gotta experiment more. Anyway, fourth point. The moon on the ascendant is not shunned, and this position is even better than the MC sometimes, see the case of Procyon. Other times the contrary is true. The effects of some stars seem to change or be augmented if sometimes the ascendant, sometimes the MC are used. Exempli Grazia Vega's signification is, quote, good on the ascendant and much better in the MC, end quote. So, <coughs> as you may have noticed, if you tend to go around and talk to people in the astrological magic community, there's a big controversy on the moon being on the ascendant, 
or not, as opposed to the moon being on the MC as being the best option. Because the Picatrix says that the moon on the ascendant is unstable, then on other sections says that it is alright, so people are ripping their hair because they don't understand um, if the moon on the ascendant is a viable option or not. So, yeah, here in the Quindicim Stellis, it is not shunned, so it is permitted. And what's more, as we have seen, like in the case of Procyon, sometimes the, the, the Ascendant is even a better position for the fixed star to be in than the MC. Uh, from, um, in the example of Procyon, there was also there, there was an additional virtue, which was Audacity, which Procyon bestowed on the, um, on the one who was born with Procyon on the Ascendant and the Moon. Uh, again, if we're talking about the ele uh, talismanic elections, probably is also, this is also true by correspondence. Um, so, yeah, it appears that elections with the Moon and the Fixed Star on the Ascendant are different from elections with the Moon and the Fixed Star on the Medium Celi. Again, I want to reiterate that the Ascendant is associated to the better, the operator, and the whole thing, um, and the Moon too. Um, and the Tenth House is more like the, um, the final results, so they are the most important uh, angles. And the Ascendant is also instant, instantaneous as time um, time-wise, as a result, while the MC is more like something which will happen just slightly later, um, and more in an external, in the external world, rather than inside of yourself. Maybe um, you never heard of this, or, um, you know, Warnock's way is to uh, say something like, um, it's okay, it's still a talisman, it's the relationship with the spirit, what's important and uh, there is no there is really no difference um, to be honest I haven't found this to be true I have found that there is a difference between elections that have um, the planet the fixed star um, or whatever on the ascendant or on the MC and recently I also made a nice Jupiter talisman which brought me nice Jupiterian things, but Mars was, wasn't even culminating, was just 12 degrees away from the MC, so not even that conjunct, but still in the 10th house. And it also brought many different martial things, which were not so pleasant to witness in the world around me, not to me like people on on their bikes being run over by uh, cars fortunately not them just the bikes but they uh, you, you know they got um, invested how do you say uh, invested by the cars um, they get hit basically uh, another time a friend of mine got mugged and thankfully he discovered it and we solved the issue Thankfully, without violence, um, uh, another friend of mine cut himself, another friend of mine um, destroyed a bottle, a freshly bought bottle of rum. Um, as soon as I, as he contacted me and I sent him the message that, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get with you and we're going to hang out. As soon as he received the message, he sent me another message saying that he just, uh, the bottle just slipped from his hands and it destroyed, it got destroyed on the ground. So he, and me too, we never even managed to taste <laughs> that nice bottle of room, which was 
um, to the flavor, which which was flavored with honey and um, hot pepper. So it was a very particular kind of, of rum. Uh, yeah, but it broke. Uh, oh, and by the way, that night when we when we hung out, we found police everywhere. And uh, you know, if you're an astrologer, you should know that destruction, um, cuttings, and police, military. This is all under the dominion of Mars. So, thankfully, I wasn't, I, I haven't been the target of these martial influences. People around me were, though. Now the effects seem to have stopped from the, the martial influences because it's a Jupiter talisman. So, sooner or later, what is not the main significator should kind of acquiesce, should kind of, you know, peter out. Um, and this indeed is what I am experiencing. Um, only the Jupiterian things seem to to remain. Um, yeah, but we will see. So yeah, there is a difference between ascendant elections and MC based elections. The medium celli is more like the external world, the ascendant is more personal things happening to you. And this is why I think that, by the way, Procyon gives audacity if you get the moon and Procyon on the ascendant, because you get infused in your being with the power of Procyon, which is a mercurial and also martial kind of star. Um, yeah. And also, uh, Pseudo Hermes here seems to sustain, seems to, su to support the idea that yes, there is a difference between elections based on the Ascendant or on the MC. So, my experience is telling me this. Uh, the data is that yes, there is a difference. We got a traditional text that supports this idea. We also have experiences from people. We also know this from electional astrology. And so it makes sense that it may be true. Fifth bullet point, and may you know all fixed stars. When they are fortunate, they signify good when unfortunate, evil. I think this is pretty self-explanatory, unless you don't know what it means to be fortunate or unfortunate in astrology. Basically, it means positive aspects from the luminaries, um, free of debilitations, and aspects to benefics, even though negative aspects to benefics may also be considered to be positive even if the interaction between these two forces represented by the fixed star and the benefic may be forceful in the case of squares and kinda fastidious in the case of oppositions. Uh, but yeah, that would be the definition of fortunate. When unfortunate, of course, the star must be debilitated, aspecting a malefic, conjunct a malefic, conjunct the sun, meaning combust, under the rays, and that's controversial. Um, retrograde, a retrograde planet is considered to be very much debilitated, conjunct some malefic fixed star, uh, such as Algol or Alacorbi. But of course, in this case, we're talking about fixed stars. So if you want an Algol or an, Alacor an Alacorbi talisman, then of course the moon must be conjunct Algol or, or Alacorbi. And aspecting a benefic would be a nice thing to do if you want such kinds of talismans. 
Yeah, so pretty self-explanatory. Let's go to the part two, next slide. The medieval school of thought may have a point, which focuses on good planets instead of aspects. The Renaissance school of thought may also have a point, focuses on good aspects instead of planets. It seems that the use of malefics needs to be considered on a case-to-case -case basic uh, basis. Remember what we said about Capella and the, con and the conjunction with Saturn. It seems that it is considered to be, I don't want to say good, but viable, at least. Mm. Now, what did I say? This is a very mercurial, duplicitous kind of bullet point, because the medieval and the Renaissance schools, schools of thoughts, of course, each one has their, their own pros and cons. Uh, What about a square to Jupiter? The Renaissance school of thought would consider the square to be a bad aspect. So they would avoid that even with a benefic. And the medieval school of thought would say that yes, that is viable because it's a square, but it is with a benefic. So different focuses, different flavors. Again, experiment, see what you find yourself more comfortable with. There's people that say that a trine from the main significator to Mars can be overpowering, you can become too much of a violent person, too aggressive at the expense of others, so you get what you want at the expense of others. Dealing with the police, even if they help you, sometimes can be not so pleasurable. Um, or dealing with violent or military types of people that help you. I mean, that's a trine. The trine is a good aspect. It's a help from somebody, right? So, or a trine to Saturn. Do you want your talisman to be helped by hard work? And, <laughs> you know, instead of a trine to, to Jupiter, where somebody, uh, some benefactor gives you what you want, like out of the blue, without having to work for it. I mean, it's it's up to you. Um, usually, um, I, I started to like the medieval school of thought more and more, especially after I made some Venus talismans which had squares to Jupiter. And they worked. So... Conversely, trines to Mars, trines to Saturn, they are still interactions with the malefics, no matter how helpful they could be. I mean, you could use them if you really, really want a talisman and uh, there will not be an opportunity for such a talisman for years, then by all means, go for it. The worst that can happen is that, of course, you have to deal with <laughs> some unpleasant help from the malefics, um, which is still a help, but they're still malefics. And yeah, you, you could destroy the talisman or maybe put it aside when you don't need it and just not wear it or just not bring it with you. Plus, as I told you before, I gave you the secret to... Uh, <laughs> open to you the doors of much more elections um, for fixed star talismans, which, which, which is basically the approach, the Mundo approach, the co-rising and the co-culmination um, approach, which is different than the standard um, Moon conjunct the um, projected degree approach. So you just have two different approaches that you can use to experiment with even more elections and talismans and they even may give you different results or maybe even more potent results so be happy and join the fray and go experiment in any case the use of hard aspects to benefics is not mentioned as we have seen in the case of um there was a knowledge snippet where they say um 
if the fortunes aspect this planet, then good will come from this star. Maybe it was Aldebaran. Um, if, from the contrary, evil will come. And you're like there mentioning, uh, thinking, um, uh, what what does the opposite mean? I mean, bad aspects to malefics? Duh, of course, I know that. What about good aspects to malefics? What about bad aspects, so-called challenging or forceful aspects to benefics? Um, I don't know. Anyway, uh, the use of hard aspects to benefics is not mentioned. Um, maybe there is a mention of when the fortunes behold this fixed star. And beholding means aspecting, seeing. Um, from the Latin videre or videre, I don't recall right now, but anyway, it means to see. So that's basically aspect, aspecting something. What we now, as today's astrologers, we know as aspecting. So does it mean any aspect? from the benefics, sorry. Again, I don't know. The consensus in the community is that um, hard aspects to benefics are okay. Good aspects, like soft aspects, like a sextile or trying to malefics, tend to be also um, accepted but of course there are opinions that differ and i told you why like five minutes ago talking about this first point so yeah third point probably not good to have hard aspects with the sun see the example of aldebaran if you recall aldebaran when aspected by the malefics such as mars or saturn or when opposed or squared by the Sun signifies all the bad things that Mars signifies. Uh, contentions, litigations, brawls, gravities and all negative things. So again I would consider each fixed star on a case-to-case -case basis um, squares or positions to the Sun I don't know try by the way if you use the traditional so to speak approach to the elections for fixed star talismans you got the moon conjunct the fixed star so an opposition of the fixed star to the Sun means that the moon is also opposed to the Sun and that is a full moon people which is by some considered to be a very strong um, accidental um, dignity. Uh, by others is considered an opposition to the sun, so a uh, very strong debilitation. To be honest, one time I made Mercury in Virgo talismans when the moon was exactly when the phase was happening, the moon was full. I started when the moon was applying to uh, the opposition to the sun and in like 20-30 minutes the moon was separating from the conjunction. So it, it was the very peak of the opposition to the sun, it, the very peak of the full moon. And I have to say, I don't know if... No, maybe not. Mercury in Virgo is more like um, it's the Earth side of Mercury. It's not like Mercury in Gemini, which is much more heady, intellectual and active. These talismans of Mercury in Virgo that I did felt very much electric, unstable, and I, while wearing them, I felt continuously like my brain was overclocked all the time, and a bit like when you studied for like two hours straight and you feel like some weird burning in the center of your head. 
at the same time you're in the zone but you're tired but you're learning so much um, but you feel this uh, it's a, exactly like weight training but for your mind <laughs> that's how they felt and it's probably it, it probably was because of the full moon the full moon is a moment where the whole sublunar world is unstable and reaching the peak you know um, there is high energy in the air everybody is high strung full moon nights are the nights where you, you know the, the most crazy shit happens everywhere in the world um, if you're into alchemy or ormus you know that full moons are very particular moments uh, the moon um, polarizes the light of the sun and also the gravitational pulls of both the sun and the moon create particular conditions on the earth so that the earth gets flooded and the atmosphere of the earth gets flooded with energy and particular kinds of um, substances. I don't know if you're into Ormus but um, to make your own Ormus usually it is suggested to do it during a full moon. Why? Because the atmosphere should be saturated of Ormus and that's the best moment when you can get the most yield for your um, for the materials that you're using. Uh, I kinda find that found that to be true. I experimented with it one time, and I effectively yes, the yield was was much higher um, during a full moon. It's something that I have to replicate other times though. But anyway, back to our astrological considerations. Yeah, so hard aspects with the sun, up to you. <laughs> Experiment and, and, and see. Uh, I brought you this example of Mercury in Virgo, which should be a very structured, stable, um, intellectual, categorizing kind of intellectual energy. Instead, it was very high strung, uh, which is typical of full moon periods. Um, so yes, I think that the full moon influences the talismans and the energy they are given in the way a full moon does. So, yeah, up to you. Also very strong, they, they had very strong effects. <sighs> yeah, I, again, like overclocking, almost overpowering, at, at times overpowering effects. So much, so much, so much intellectual stuff, so much, uh, dude, you have to try, <laughs> just try and see what gets manifested into your sphere. Just be careful because the full moon is like having that particular thing manifest into your sphere, into your life. With the volume knob all the way cranked to all the way up. So much so that, you know, the music can go into distortion. You get what you want, you get a shit ton of it though. And it can be overpowering at times. So yeah, fourth, fourth, um, fourth bullet point. Uh, good aspects to malefics seem okay when both the signification of the specific fixed star is not evil. Important, and their nature corresponds to the nature of the star, although it's case specific, like Saturn being viable for Capella, as we said earlier. Instead, plainly malefic stars like Alacorvi or duplicitous stars like Arcturus, Salgol and Antares don't like malefics. They don't really give a shit. We don't like them being with malefics, that's what I mean. Because they would manifest each other's evil natures. Each other's evil natures, yeah. For example, uh, if you fuck around with Algol by torturing her with an aspect like a square or an opposition to Mars, don't do it. <laughs> if you don't want to lose your head, maybe even literally. 
Remember, when conjunct each other, the nature of the planet gets augmented and the nature of the star too. That's a direct quote from Hermes. So act accordingly and carefully, especially when malefics are involved. Now, let's repeat this because it's important. Good aspects to malefics seem okay when both the signification of the specific fixed star is not evil. For example, Capella doesn't have a an evil signification, and the nature of Capella also corresponds to the nature of Saturn and Jupiter too, but Jupiter is not a malefic. We're talking about the malefics here. So Saturn having good aspects with the fixed star you're making the talisman of, not always viable. If the star is not evil, it does not have a malefic signification like Capella, then a good aspect can be good, sometimes even the conjunction, although it's case-specific. So always be careful and conjunctions to malefics <laughs> I don't know. Let's say that I would avoid, the, avoid them. If you want to become like <sighs> Um, I don't know, somebody very much respectable, contained, introverted, judicious, uh, very Saturnian, very... Um, <laughs> yes, um, <laughs> you know, the stiff lip kind of guy. Probably a conjunction to Capella on the Ascendant by Saturn and the Moon. Um, could be something that you want, maybe not, if you don't want this. Uh, yeah, Saturn seems to be the, I mean, Capella seems to be the only fixed star which is um, viable for a conjunction by Saturn. Other stars, let's say, I don't know, Arcturus has the signification of Mars, um, and when aspected by the fortunes of Jupiter, if I recall correctly. So, or was it Mercury? No, maybe Jupiter. I have to see that. Anyway, um, if a fixed star has a malefic nature, then I don't know if it's wise to put a malefic conjunct it. I wouldn't do it, personally. Um, maybe try. <laughs> Again, up to you. Last point for part two, there's also part three. For fixed stars that can use malefics like Capella, the condition of the malefic is probably important. Meaning free of debilitations. In the case of Dene Balgedi, it's mentioned that aspects that are cast from Mercury and Saturn, which are planets of its nature, while they are retrograde and combust, will destroy its signification. This is a direct quote. There's a reason, there's a reason to believe that this holds true in general, and indeed, even in electional astrology, aspects to retrograde or combust planets are not always, um, they're not good, especially to retrograde planets. Retrograde planets are considered to be deb strongly debilitated. And if you have to make a talisman and the main significator is aspecting a retrograde planet, uh, it's probably unstable. I made a Lunar Mansion talisman recently for um, for some things. And let's just say that when... Um, the things that I asked started to manifest. However, they weren't brought to completion. It wasn't even something that happened and interrupted the process. The process just got interrupted and got lost in 
nothingness. Like I was about to obtain to obtain that thing which I asked, and then it came to nothing. Just like that, just like throwing a stone into fog. It disappears into nothingness. So I looked at the election and indeed the moon was aspecting, was trining a retrograde Jupiter. And I took the talisman, I respectfully deconsecrated it, I asked uh, um, for forgiveness to the, the hierarchy of that talisman. I took it and I threw it into a um, cemetery. So, yeah. This is the evidence that I've got until now, um, up until now, regarding retrograde planets suspecting the main significator of a talisman, which is very little. <laughs> Um, still, having this talisman and petitioning it multiple times, this thing that it should have manifested something happened multiple times, and then multiple times, all the times, each single time, it came to nothing, it just it got lost into nothingness. Whatever was about to manifest, then whew, disappeared into nothingness. So effectively nothing came out of that talisman. That talisman manifested nothing. So it happened multiple times for that single instance. So after that I am wary of not making talismans where the main significator aspects a retrograde planet because I think that that retrograde planet may kind of be pissed off or just not in the mood to give you whatever you want or if they open up some avenue for you for that thing to be manifested in your life then they may very well retract it so you don't get what you asked for in the end and this symbolically makes sense because you know the planet is going backwards so it's like here you go. Nah, maybe not. Here you go. Nah, fuck you. No. <laughs> Here it is. Nah, change my mind. You know, it makes sense for a retrograde planet. Anyway. I am aware that Jupiter is still a benefic, even if retrograde. Uh, so whatever interaction with Jupiter um, should always be resolved in a positive outcome. That hasn't been the case for me with this particular Lunar Mansion talisman. And not even for a friend of mine to which I gave another one of these talismans from the same batch. Last part. Complexio probably just means temperament, and consequently refers to temperament theory and the four temperaments, of course, which are melancholic, sanguine, choleric, and phlegmatic. Again, we talked extensively about this in the previous videos. Next point, some herbs can be used with multiple stars and provide additional effects in talismans if they are included. The inclusion of some of them seems to be optional. And I have seen different uh, versions of the Queen de Chimstellis. Uh, in the last manuscript that I have consulted, which was the one you're seeing here into the background of these slides, um, additional herbs were mentioned for some stars and some options were provided. Um, again, um, about what herbs to to choose and to put into different fixed star talismans. Uh, so it seems that herbs can be swappable. It seems that herbs can be used. Uh, they're not so fixed as the stones for each star. 
you can use multiple herbs which um, should be used to enhance or um, further hone in on the specific effect you want from that talisman but it isn't clear if using different stones for different stars although of a similar and synergistic nature is a viable option or not experimentation is required although experiences from the community such as using mixed materials or metals instead of the specific stones and herbs describes described in the quindicim seem to indicate that results are manifested nonetheless this would give points to the experiment and expand the magical art side of the rectificare controversy but what about the strength and qualities of the effects reported by the community we don't know again experimentation is required and again it isn't clear if using different stones is viable or not for example do you want um more of the um favor side of algal is ruby with algal why just using ruby for aldebaran if the in the lapidaries the virtues of ruby are to give riches and honors it's a perfect match for aldebaran but algal also gives favor other than protection so if you want to have riches and favor or maybe favor from people to obtain riches why not use ruby for an algal an algal talisman and see what happens um, and this although this seems to be very much an approach that is viable for herbs as i said earlier for stones it it doesn't seem to be and then again rectificare probably just means to correct not expand an experiment but fuck that you know expand an experiment what's uh, whatever do it anyway <laughs> so um, I would you know you can find inexpensive raw rubies and you can try you want to use sage with Arcturus instead of Spica to or with Capella f to to further stimulate the medicinal effects of Capella. I don't know. Why don't you try and see what happens? Uh, yeah. So oh yeah, and then we got experiences from the community. You know, we got. Uh, you know, first of all, the most famous one is Warnock. Warnock uses bronze and silver talismans. No herbs. Um, no stones. Um, custom images, many times. So... And still, the, his clients give him very, very strong testimonials about the workings of the talismans so what is going on here we also know that each metal is associated to a particular planet we should also know that according to Ficino gold is the best metal of all uh, also gold seems to be the most conducive of, of all the metals and seems to hold astrolite more than others then there's silver which is the metal associated to the moon and of course as the moon silver can reflect everything for correspondences uh, for correspondence reasons so gold and silver should be the best available materials to make your talismans with but people use bronze and copper and tin and glass and steel and they get effects so what's going on here we also know um was it from the picatrix or agrippa maybe both 
we know that the celestial virtues tend to act, maybe from the Pikachu's, tend to act violently on the world around us. Meaning that if you make a talisman and you, of course, an astrological talisman, which is a talisman made when the appropriate astrological factors are in there, then that talisman will have an effect, will have an effect on um, the surroundings um, where it's in and to its owner. So it's may, may, maybe the material can hold these celestial influences better, or maybe it's just a sum of the natural elemental virtues of the material with the celestial virtues of the astrological moment you carved the talisman in. So if the virtues of both are together then it's a synergistic kind of thing going on. You add the effects, the natural effects of the material with the celestial effects of the incisions, of the carvings. So that could be the reason why people even, you know, make paper talismans, wax talismans, and they work. Because you made them at that particular celestial moment. So that thing will in any case, receive the celestial influences. And what about... people that say that you have to have a stone, you have to have the herbs, you have to have gold or silver or a metal associated to the planet. Of that fixed star's nature, Welcome to the community of astrological magic. So, experiment again and see what works, how, and what doesn't, and why. And finally, the last point you can find many of the things written in the Quindicim in Agrippa. But many snippets are missing, especially the extended descriptions of the fixed stars, stones, herbs nature's interactions with the planets. Agrippa justifies himself by redirecting the reader to more thorough and specialized astrological texts. And this, my friends, can be probably one of these astrological texts Agrippa was talking about. And as soon as I complete the translation of it, it's gonna be available and that is um, probably some kind of carrot I'm dangling in front of you <laughs> to get you excited about my new um, about this translation work I'm doing on the Quindishim. Because uh, yes, you can go to Agrippa, you can read many, many different things, but if you want to know even more about astrological magic specifically, then this text is very interesting. And I hope this preview in these different videos of my translation work of this wonderful text has been to your liking, uh, has satisfied you. That's the end of this video series. Finis, this means end, of course. Now, want to know more? Keep in touch to know when I will release the complete work. And stay tuned for more stuff. Where to find me? You can find me on my Facebook page and send a message to contact me either through the page or directly to me and it is on Facebook slash Eidos the Ivory Tower. Uh, if you want to go to the shop and if you want to look at my services, it's all there. However, you can't just buy from there. Um, you have to send me a message on Messenger. 
and when you send me the message um, I will give you the PayPal address to which you can uh, make the payment for the thing the talisman that you want or the service that you want to book me with um, and then of course we're going to we're going to talk we're going to see if there there is still availability for the talisman you're looking for um, but it should be because I, I update them uh, every time I somebody buys a talisman from me and yeah and we will either uh, schedule you know a consultation with me if you want a tarot consultation I do tarot consultation I do astrological consultations I do also spiritual general consultations um, of either a half an, a half an hour or one hour and if you want of course you can donate to me an amount of money which you deeply feel is right and you deeply feel is proportional to the value you feel you have received from my work the paypal address is this paypal paypal.me slash edocosta and these are the other links and you can find all of this into the description box uh, this is my telegram group edos the every tower the every tower you can find it at uh, t.me slash Eidos the Ivory Tower, of course. This is a work in progress. Um, my YouTube channel, The Ivory Tower. And this is the address, of course. If you're watching this from YouTube, then welcome. You're already in it. Subscribe, like. Click the notification bell button so that you are notified for each video. I release and then on BitChute, uh, the Avery Tower official, which is still a work in progress. I also upload my videos there in case something sketchy goes down and my YouTube channel gets closed or something. And you can find it at this address, which will be in the description box of whatever platform you're watching this in. So let's get back to my beautiful face. Hi. So again, uh, this has been my work at Astromagia, which I presented at Astromagia. It has been corrected and expanded. My hair are all zing. Uh, so yeah, I am still working on the translation of the Quindicim Stellis. I have obtained, in the end, um, thanks to a friend, the complete manuscript of the Quindicim Stellis, which is a critical edition with five or six different manuscripts, and it's all in Latin. Uh, so it's 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 work. So it's going to be ready when it's going to be ready. And again, if you want to donate, you can do so uh, at PayPal.me/edocosta. Uh, the link is going to be in the description box below if you want a consultation with me go to my Facebook page message me go to my telegram group message me whatever you want and we will schedule an appointment and see what's up and if you want to buy also my talismans you can see them into the shop page of my Facebook page Eidos the Ivory Tower and yeah so this is Eduardo. I came at you from the Ivory Tower. <laughs> and yeah, that's it for today. Uh, thank you for being with me, for having been with me for this whole video series on my work on the Quindicim Stellis. I hope you loved it like I did, like I did. And yeah. I'll go back to my ivory tower now. Bye. See you next time.